So good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again and we are going to talk about Paulinha. Now, Arsenal apparently have serious interest in the Fulham midfielder and not in the summer. We're talking about January window, people. So listen, uh, we're going to dissect that with a fine tooth comb uh, because we are linked to uh, quite a lot of players. And uh, you know how this January transfer window works. It works the same as the summer one. And uh, we're linked to a billion players and sign hardly any. And uh, I'm here to decide with my own opinions whether I actually think there's any weight behind any of these stories that, let's be real, most of these people just pluck out of fresh air. And uh, you and I could probably make up better stories than some of these um, so-called journalists. They're not journalists, half of them. Um, they're just storytellers. They don't have any sources, most of them. Uh, they have no link at all with the football club. Nobody's giving them links to anything. Um, but they can write a story um, and they make it sound great. So let's, uh, let's get into the Paulinia um, link to Arsenal. Uh, but anyway, before we do that, make sure you are smashing the like button on the video. That'd be great. And um, I am going to be live. We Well, it would have been after, but I'm live before you watch this video. So if you want to go back and check out the Spurs watch along, go and do it. But I did do a show earlier with uh, Side and Northside as well. Uh, which was interesting. Uh, so go and check that out. And I did do a video on here. Sorry, I'm lying. On Lee Reacts. I keep getting confused which blooming channel I'm on. I'm multitasking. Uh, I did a video on Lee Reacts as well about how Chelsea are buried as a finish, uh, finished article. They're a finished football club. Uh, they are not the finished article. They will never be the finished article again. And that football club is never going to be elite again. Um, so yeah, go and check that video out on Lee Reacts as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, like I said, we are linked to uh, Paulinha, which is kind of funny, actually, because um, we were we were speculated to be in for him um, February 25th to be a summer signing. Uh, that obviously didn't happen. And uh, he was on the cusp of signing for Bayern Munich, uh, which is kind of funny uh, because that all fell through. Probably not funny for him. That all fell through. And um, yeah, he ended up staying at Fulham. Now, listen, he's a top player. I like him. I think he's um, he's a player that can, with all due respect, level up. And I think that um, he will level up. I do think that um, he will be leaving Fulham. It's just how much now? Because pff, I'm seeing some ridiculous figures for this guy. 70 million euros. Fabrizio Romano did a video earlier on today, actually, uh, saying that um, Bayern Munich still have concrete interest in him. Arsenal, he confirmed, have got interest in him. And... Um, Bayern don't really want to pay 70 million euro for him, which is cool because I don't think he's worth that kind of dough. Having said that, if he is going to be a player that can walk into our first team alongside Declan Rice, because listen, let's be real, Thomas Party's days are numbered at this football club. Uh, we'll be to, it'll be a bit of a surprise if we see Thomas Party kick ball again for this club, if we're being completely honest. But I do think um, I do think that sometimes you do have to pay over the odds for players. Like, and people thought we paid over the odds for Declan Rice. Is he worth 100 million plus wages? Probably not, if we're being completely honest. But we needed him. We paid the dough. And let's be real. If you're comparing him to other players around the same sort of fee, he's outdoing all of them. So it's what you're prepared to pay for a player. I don't think many players are worth their transfer fee, if I'm honest. Um, however, if you do want the player and you think that he can be an important, integral part into your team, then why not just go and buy him yeah, and put the money on the table? Uh, Fabrizio revealed strong interest. And he said, the Gunners have, uh, are having a good season. We are having a good season so far. Um, but Thomas, play, uh, Thomas Party is a player that is out injured, and it has been for the majority of the campaign. That could force Arsenal to go into the transfer market to re get a reinforcement in that position. Obviously, Arsenal do only have Jorginho and El Nenny as other midfielders, really, that can play there. I want to see either of them, if I'm honest. Um, but but this is a player that I do like. And I do think we may be interested in him. It's just now whether we can do a deal. And it's whether we actually have solid interest. Fabrizio said on kick, what I confirm about Paulinho is that there is also English clubs interested in. One of those clubs is Arsenal. It is true that Arsenal appreciates the player. Uh, there are some people at the club who consider Paulinho uh, a very good player. It's one of the players they discussed internally. However, Roman, Romano pointed out significant hurdles, notably Paulina's age, 
and financial aspects, I'll get my words out in a minute, is approaching 29 next year. In fact, let's have a look. Let's see when he... I don't buy into all of this, let's go for Project Epstein. No, buy the best players that are available. Yeah, that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, buy the best players. Yeah, it's not difficult, is it? Let's have a look. Let's see how old this fella is. 28. Well, it's only just turned 28. Yeah, they're making that sound like, wow, he's going to be 29 January. No, he ain't. His birthday's 9th of July. So he's literally just turned 28. And when you actually have a look at the fact that we've got Jorginho and Mohamed El Nenny as backups to Thomas Party, who is also over the age of 30, then why not go and get this guy? 28, four-year deal, brings him up to 32, bin him. Pretty simple, isn't it? Not rocket science, is it? But all of the mainstream media outlets are running with this story. And obviously Fabrizio has gone out there uh, saying the same thing. He said um, the fact that he's approaching 29 next year, Paulinho's age does not align with Arsenal's preference for younger signings. Financially, the club may be reluctant to make a substantial investment after already committing significant resources to secure rice in the summer. Listen, let's not pretend Arsenal are skint here. Uh, he said these are there, there are two issues. First one is age. He's not a super young player. I think he'll be 29 next year. Yes, he's only just turned. <laughs> Only just turned 28, so he's 28 till he's 29. If you know, you know. Uh, also, the price. Arsenal cannot spend that amount of money, something like 70 or 80 million, on more midfield, um, one more midfielder after spending a big amount they invested on Rice. I totally disagree. With financial fair play concern, it's expected Arsenal will have to sell before they can buy this winner. Absolute cobblers. Yeah, absolute rubbish. Yeah, there's no way people can tell me yeah, that teams can go out there and do a billion quid in 12 months yeah and we can't make it make sense make it make sense yes i know chelsea sell players yeah, and yes i know that some of them players are on death row contracts right? so it kind of amortizes the cost over eight years rather than now but let's not pretend that we paid the 105 or 100 million plus add-ons for declan rice in one go let's not pretend that was a thing we didn't yeah not only that we did get rid of granite Xhaka as well and I'd imagine the money that we got for Granite Xhaka would be spread over the length of the contract. That's normally how these things work. Yeah, let's not pretend that this football club is skin. And let's not pretend yeah, that we can't go and attract players because we can attract players now, number one. Yeah, big ups to the club for being putting us in a position where we can actually attract players now. It's a fair play. I'll give them a pat on the back for that one. But don't dare let us down in January. Yeah, this geezer's available. Go and sign him. Yeah, and if it costs 70 million, you're not paying 70 million up front. You're paying 70 million over a four-year contract or a five-year contract till he's 33 or whatever. Yeah, it's not rocket science. Yes, you're going to pay him wages. And I suppose when a player comes in for 70, 80 million, they're going to be on decent though. But Jorginho is on over 100 grand a week. Bin him. Get rid of him. Yeah, even if you only get 5 million for him, you've got 100 grand off the wages. Give that to this guy. Give him another 20 grand on top every week, 140 away, 150. Yeah, it's not rocket science. Eddie and Ketty are someone we can get rid of. So if we do have to sell to buy, yeah, there's two players we can get rid of. Yeah, other players on the on the books as well we could get rid of. Smith Rowe, another one. Listen, I like Smith Rowe, but he don't look like you're getting anywhere near the team, mate, and you're never fit. So go and cash in on him. Yeah, whether that be now or the summer. But if Arsenal go out there this January and flop, yeah, I'm not going to be happy because yet again we're top of the league right now, right? And yet again. They flop. That shows the ambition of this football club. There's no way anyone can tell me that with our income and our resources and our wage bill right now, and the way that we've dropped our wage bill from up here to down here you know, over the last few years, there's nobody that can tell me we're struggling with FFP. Nobody can tell me that. I don't believe it. I do not believe it one bit. Yeah, Chelsea doing a billion quid. Man United, fair enough, they've got a bigger income. Yeah, but they're spending top dollar. Their, their wage bill's ridiculous. They've got players on three, four... 100 grand a week. They had Ronaldo on 500 grand a week. I mean, Casemiro's on 340. Varane's on 300 and sank, 350. Like, they're on top dollar. Rashford's to over 300. Sancho, 300. Like, come on. What's going on here? Yeah, if, if he's a player that we're in for and we like, buy him. Yeah, because he might just be that missing piece. I do feel we need a striker. And it ain't just going to be one or the other for me. Yeah, I am not going to be sitting here when that transfer window shuts, sitting there going, oh, yes, well, we got Paulinha. Yes, what a great transfer window. Woohoo! No, we need a striker, mate. We need a midfielder and we need a centre-back. Yeah, because I'll tell you now, put Paulinha into that team, Declan Rice can go forward a bit more. 
Yeah, then we've got two competent midfielders side by side. We don't have to use 29 week in, week out. Fair play, he scored a few goals. Well done. Yeah, but he ain't a midfielder. Go and get a competent midfielder. This guy is it. Go and get him. Go and sign Anderson from Palace. Competent centre-back that will be adequate cover if one of them two centre-backs gets injured. Go and get me Ivan Tony. Go and do the money now. Don't have to do so much in the summer. All you've got to do in the summer is concentrate on getting players out. They're getting out the Smith Rose, the Cedrics, the El Nenis. Not that we're going to get rid of El Neni, but I would get rid of the Jorginhos. Now get rid of the Reese Nelsons of this world. They get rid of some of these players in, in the summer. Yeah, then we, we only have to bring one or two in. But what do I know? I'm a numpty YouTuber. It is what it is. But I do think this story has some kind of legs. Um, however, I don't think we're going to buy him. And uh, we know that if we get into a bidding war, we have, say, a Bayern Munich or someone. We're not very good at bidding wars. I know we won the Declan Rice bidding war, but Man City have always had this stance um, of we're going to a certain amount, we ain't going above it. Yeah, and their certain amount was about 90 mil. They ain't going above it. We did. So fair play. Uh, but anyway, let me know your thoughts, feelings and everything on that. Would you like to see Paulina? Is he worth 70, 80 million? Uh, if so, do you think we'll get him? Um and even if you don't think he's worth it, do you think we'll get him? Leave it all in the comment section. Who would you like to see come in? Give us some suggestions. Uh, how many players do we need to realistically win the title? I personally think three minimum. You know, I take. I want a right winger as well. I'm greedy. Get me Neto. Go and do 200 M's in this transfer window. Get me Ivan Tony, Neto, um, Anderson, and Paulinha. Go and get all four of them. But we won't. We'll end up with one or the other, and uh, it'll probably be somebody we've never heard of from Brazil. I mean, Santos got relegated. We'll probably go and raid them now. But it is what it is, people. Uh, make sure you are smashing the like on the video. Uh, make sure you are subbing to the channel. So close to 90K. Come on, people. Let's get that wrapped up, please. Let's get that wrapped up. I want that done and dusted. And uh, do go out and uh, check the Lee Reacts channel. Like I said, I did a video about Chelsea being buried as an elite institution. And uh, they ain't going anywhere uh, for the next decade or so. Very quickly, they will be 20 years without a title under that ownership. Um, or collectively, it's six years without a title currently. But he's um, he's got to be there for 10 years legally, apparently. So they're finished. Uh, but anyway, leave your comments and supers down below. Adios, amigos. I'll be back again tomorrow. We're out of here. Ciao.